the volcano that entombed a society. This is Pompeii. Once a flourishing and bustling Roman city in southern Italy, Pompeii, as well as thousands of its inhabitants, were destroyed during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The explosion released an onslaught of pyroclastic surges, burying everything in its path under seven metres of scorching hot ash, rock and pumice. When the ruins were rediscovered after thousands of years, everything was perfectly preserved underneath the ash and volcanic detritus. Mount Vesuvius is the only active volcano in all of mainland Europe, and it is considered to be one of the most dangerous in the world. It stands at an impressive 1,281 metres high, and its base extends over 30 miles. Its mountainous height is formed from a composite layer of millennia worth of lava and ash from periodic eruptions, and as a composite stratovolcano, Vesuvius has the potential to erupt extremely violently. The city of Pompeii was certainly ahead of its time. In its prime, it boasted grand stone buildings, majestic temples, paved streets, sanitation systems, as well as running water. The seismic activity provided the area with nutrient-rich volcanic soil, which enabled the production of grapes and olives and abundant crops. Whilst the city's inhabitants were accustomed to seismic activity and severe earthquakes, the volcano had not erupted for over 1,800 years. The people of Pompeii were arguably not even aware that Vesuvius was a volcano. In fact, there was not a word for volcano before 79 AD. Interestingly, the word volcano came from the Roman god of fire, Vulcan, and coincidentally, the catastrophic eruption happened to occur the day after the Romans celebrated the religious festival of Vulcania in his name, with great bonfires and impressive shrines displayed throughout the city. A very unfortunate set of circumstances ultimately led to the destruction of the entire settlement, along with neighbouring settlements. The eruption of Vesuvius lasted over 24 hours, and for the entire duration, the direction of the wind blew the scorching ash cloud directly towards Pompeii. The temperature of the ash reached up to 300 degrees, hot enough to kill the unfortunate people who were sheltering in their stone buildings and houses, entombing them for thousands of years. Pliny the Younger documented his experience from the other side of the Bay of Naples. His own uncle, Pliny the Elder, commanded a fleet sent out after the eruption to provide aid to the citizens. He persevered ashore, and many escaped thanks to his brave efforts, but he was overcome by volcanic fumes which ultimately suffocated him on the shores of Pompeii. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, was able to speak to survivors and hand down primary accounts to Roman historian Tacitus. Pliny's account reported that around 8am on the 24th day of August, a cloud of unusual size and shape appeared over the Bay of Naples. He noted that there had been sizeable tremors in the days leading up to the eruption, though these were disregarded as they were not unusual for the area. Witnessing the disaster from further away, Pliny the Younger was able to provide a first-hand timeline of the event according to his letters to Tacitus. The ash hardened, lava and white pumice began to fall east of the volcano around 1pm. By 2pm it reached Pompeii, continuing accumulating at around 10 to 15 centimetres each hour. At 5 p.m., the roofs of stone buildings begin to collapse under the weight of the accumulated volcanic debris. Fist-sized rocks plummeted from the sky at around 50 metres per second. The volcanic cloud completely blocked out the sun's natural light, making the escape efforts of many a futile endeavour. With no natural light available, some residents attempted to flee towards the harbour of Pompeii with the hopes of escaping by water on boats. However, hundreds were reluctant to leave their extravagant homes and batten down instead, 
seeking shelter in their homes and local communal buildings. By midnight, the eruption column extended some twenty miles upwards into the sky, hurling pumice and ash into the stratosphere. By 1am, a second surge hit the area, bursting through windows and roofs and causing mass suffocation to the unfortunate souls hiding within. At 4am, the volcanic cloud had become so heavy that it collapsed, sending superheated gases and ashes down the slopes of the volcano at increasing speeds. By 6.45am, Pompeii was destroyed by the enormous pyroclastic surge the unfathomable heat of which killed almost instantaneously. The unfortunate Pompeians did not have time to suffocate in the ash, because their bodies went into immediate and instantaneous cadaveric spasms due to the intense heat. The damage was so extensive that the city was abandoned and no attempts were made to recover or rebuild in the path of the mountain Vesuvius. The emperor had guards stationed on the shores to prevent looting after the initial disaster, and after thick layers of ash covered the area, Pompeii was forgotten for 1,500 years as it lay lost and buried. Shadows of the city were uncovered entirely by accident in 1599, when a Swiss architect by the name of Domenico Fontana discovered some interesting ruins during the construction of an underground channel to divert a river. He stumbled upon walls with fresco paintings and the inscription Pompeii. However, these were misattributed and considered to be of little significance, so they were left untouched. Herculaneum was discovered in 1709, and systematic excavations began there in 1738. The ruins of Pompeii could not be properly unearthed until King Charles III ordered the site to be excavated in 1749. His primary incentive was to recover art for the royal collection, however his engineers soon revealed the extent of what was buried at Pompeii. The subsequent exploration of the lost city fell into three main phases. For the first hundred years, the excavation were funded by the French royal dynasty of the Bourbon regime. Aristocratic antiquarians acquired much of the ancient art from the site, and as the academic study of classical art gained traction in Europe, it became fashionable for wealthy tourists to return home with souvenirs from Pompeii. The second phase began in 1860, after the overthrowing of the Bourbons. An archaeologist named Giuseppe Fiorelli was appointed director of local excavations and organised the systematic clearance of entire areas of the city. Due to the lack of oxygen and moisture, the ash had preserved everything, exactly as it had been at the time of the disaster, right down to graffiti on the walls of the buildings. During the excavation process, archaeologists discovered pockets within the cemented ashes where the compressed ash had formed moulds around the bodies of people which had subsequently decayed over time. They were able to create illustrative replicas by pouring plaster of Paris into the gaps and casting the internal impressions from within the voids. State-backed clearance campaigns continued after the Second World War. Small, rudimentary excavation teams of workmen were deployed in an attempt to build up a history of the city prior to its untimely destruction. Pompeii continues to be excavated to this day, and at least a third of it is still believed to be buried. The exact number of people who died at Pompeii is unknown. Around 1,500 bodies have been uncovered, but an estimated 16,000 are expected to be uncovered at excavation sites around the volcano.